TV's Dr Chris Steele joins me now to chat about celiac disease. One in 100 people in the UK have it, and Dr Chris is one of those people. Many thanks for joining us. Obviously a subject that's very close to your heart, but let's start off with telling people what celiac is. Yeah, well, it's spelled C-O-E-L-I-A-C, or pronounced celiac. Uh, and basically, um, it's a, an intolerance of your body to gluten, which is found in wheat, barley, and rye. So when you have celiac disease, if you eat any food that contains wheat, barley, and rye, you get some very troublesome symptoms. And the sort of symptoms I had, uh, severe diarrhea, abdominal pain, uh, fatigue, uh, and weight loss. Now, people might just say, well, is that not just a bit like irritable bowel syndrome? I mean, how severe are these symptoms and how can they affect the running of your life and your lifestyle? Well, the, the symptoms can be obviously very mild or very severe, as with any medical condition. Uh, and you raised a good point there, the irritable bowel syndrome story, because there are, I believe, a lot of patients out there with irritable bowel syndrome and they're not getting any better with their medications. And these patients could have celiac disease undiagnosed. In fact, you mentioned earlier, one in 100 people have got celiac disease. Over 80% of those are undiagnosed. They're out there walking around with celiac disease. They don't know they've got it. And the complications of celiac disease, um, osteoporosis, thinning of the bones, I've got that as a consequence of not being diagnosed over years. Uh, for women in particular, women who've got a problem with infertility and recurring miscarriages could have celiac disease. And you're also at increased risk of bowel cancer. So, you know, the consequences of having celiac, not knowing you've got it, having it undiagnosed for years, uh, can be extremely uh, troublesome. So how does it go undiagnosed for years? Surely you go to the doc, you say, I've been poorly, I've got these symptoms. Would they not just test for celiac? No, no, they wouldn't. And in fact, um, people love this story. I went to my own GP. They can't believe a doctor goes to his own GP. Well, you have to, to get a, a, an objective assessment of your condition. So I went to my own GP and I said, I've got abdominal pain, uh, diarrhea, uh, weakness, uh, weight loss. And the big scare factor there was this could be bowel cancer. So he referred me to a specialist. I had various investigations, didn't have bowel cancer. And the consultant said, well, I think you've got irritable bowel. And that seemed fine by me. It all, it all fitted in. The symptoms were very similar. Uh, I had treatment for irritable bowel for about a month, but in fact was no better. And then I had tests for celiac disease. Now, the good thing now... Um, there's a, a, a fairly new test for celiac disease. It's a blood test, simple, single blood test called TTG, and your GP can do this. Now, if that comes back positive, it indicates you've probably got celiac, then you need a biopsy, which is actually swallowing a, a very fine tube, a little telescope into your intestines where they take a biopsy, and then that clinches the diagnosis. But is this one of those situations when you go to the doctor, they're going to try and bat you away and put you off because it's going to cost them some money to test you for it, or should you push for it? Or oh, you should push for it. But um, And the fact I was actually down at number 10 Downing Street uh, yesterday handing in a petition uh, to get the government to encourage GPs to test patients uh, and to make them more aware of this condition. The test is not expensive. It's a simple blood test. But once you've got that done, you know whether you have or you haven't got the condition. And so cost-wise, uh, the, the simple test costs very little, but if it goes undiagnosed going forward, I suppose, celiac will cost the NHS a lot of money. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if, you, uh, you know, if you're going forward undiagnosed, well, you know, you're going to be a drain on your local you know, health resources. So, of course, it's very important to get people diagnosed. Uh, and also, of course, once you're diagnosed, there's no cure. There's no treatment. What you have to do is to go on to a strict gluten-free diet for the rest of your life. Now, you know, okay, that's, that's not impossible, but uh, it, it's, it can be a little bit difficult at first when once you're diagnosed, finding foods that don't contain wheat, barley, or rye, because it's in everything. You read the labels. I mean, I went into a supermarket the other day. This, this, this is no good, that's no good, this is no good. 
There's not an awful lot out there, but thank goodness a lot of the supermarkets are yeah. now doing free from ranges, free yes, from syrup, from they do. And can, am I right in saying you can get some, get some of the food on prescription? Is it yes, flour? You can, and, yeah, if you're yeah. a celiac, you can get gluten-free food on NHS prescription. So yeah. talk to your GP about that. Wonderful. Unfortunately, time has beaten us, but it's a very interesting subject. Many thanks for joining us, Chris. Thank you.